station is Platt Square. Previously on Last Stop. What's wrong with my dad? Jesus! You've stolen my body! We're both in exactly the same situation. There's got to be some cause, some connection between the two of us. You've swapped breaks? Yeah. Okay. It'll look too suspicious if I'm alone with Molly. On Monday we're going to have to cover for each other. I'm going to have to pretend to be you. So what's the plan? The only way this is going to work is if we imitate each other exactly. It's got to be perfect, right? So good that even my own mother wouldn't know the difference. All right, Danny Ocean. Let him finish. This sounds fun. First order of business, 7.30 a.m., run with Amy. Amy's got a mind like clockwork. She is a stickler for punctuality. If you're even a minute late, she'll suspect something's up. I should tell you, I'm not known for my timekeeping. Well, you better step up. Amy won't take any crap. Sorry, Molly, pardon my French. Jack loves Amy. I do not. Can we get back to this, please? Let's review the itinerary. 7.30 a.m., run with Amy. 7.50, visit coffee shop. 7.52, order skinny caramel macchiato, no phone. 7.53, consume beverage. 7.55, jump off London Bridge. 8.15, buy Molly a new mobile phone. OK, now he's messing around. So, I meet Amy. How do I explain what happened yesterday? First you'll have to put her completely at ease. She's a bit of a detective or something, so don't be all nervous, all right? She can smell fear. Just be super casual. Okay. So I'll just go up to her and say... Hey, up, Chuck. Pardon? Dad, no. Try and bring it into the 21st century, yeah? Look, just distract her somehow. Talk about something she loves. We're out of cereal. I'll pick some up after work. Focus. Look, Amy's a big theatre nerd. She could talk for hours about various plays she's into. It's incredibly boring. She's also been saying she fancies a holiday. Distract her with that. Holiday, theatre, got it. So, got any holidays planned? What was the deal with that piss up the other day? How come you're hanging out with fat middle-aged blokes? I wouldn't call him fat. Some people say he's very handsome. So are we going for this run or what? He's a thinking man's man, you know. Got a lot about him. Got a lot to offer. Keep up if you can. Wow, I feel great. I've not been able to run like this in years. You spent enough time on the treadmill. Yeah, I guess that is pretty vain, isn't it? Well, you're no know, role model, but I wouldn't beat yourself up too bad. What do you mean about me not being a good role model? Enough with the chit chat, you give me a stitch. Come on, let me hear it. What is it that makes me such a bad person? Bad person? You're harmless, I just said you don't set a good example. You're just like me, you're a total workaholic and a massive geek. A massive geek? Too bad. Yeah, 
I can live with that. All right, Jack. That was great. I feel fantastic. So, when can we do this again? What's going on with you? You all right? What do you mean? I've never felt better. I'll call you tomorrow. No, it's fine. I'll call you. Take care of yourself, okay, Jack? We'd better get our story straight for Shaz. Shaz is great. You're going to love her. Hang on, what do you mean, story? Well, you may be surprised to learn. Turns out, you and me are related. Huh? Welcome to the family, Jack. I was just talking to John about his mysterious nephew. All right, lad. You know, I don't tell you this nearly enough, but you are definitely the handsome one in the family. Hiya, Shaz. Uh, it is Sh- Shaz, right? I think I think John must have told me that. So, now your family secret's out, I'm dying to know more. What was it like having John as an uncle? Can't complain. You know, John, a total gent. Always has been. That's kind of you to say, Jack. I would only add that it was made easier by you being such a kind, considerate, patient, intelligent, handsome young man. So how long's Jack in town for? Oh, not long. For the foreseeable. Just a few days, really. Well, we can discuss it. What's there to discuss? Sounds like you both need to get your stories straight. Where were you before you came to London, Jack? Just here and there. He was in Cambodia. Wow. Cambodia. Yeah, he was working for the UN. You know, peacekeeping, global stuff. Not that glamorous, really. Mainly just cleaning toilets and making coffee. He's done well for himself. Now he runs this high-tech startup you see selling solar-powered submarines to the super-rich. Fascinating. I hope life isn't too slow paced for you while you slum it with us. Well, I'm going to head off, John. Don't be too late. Cheerio. See you later. She's nice. Submarines. Too much. So, what is it that you do for a job anyway? Are you a taxidermist? A taxidermist? No, I'm, I'm, I'm a creative. I work in design. I'm an artist. Taxidermists are people who take animals and pull out their insides and make them stand up and things. It's awesome. Well, you don't look like an artist. Yeah, well, not anymore I don't, do I? <laughs> but that's my job. I'm a video game developer. That's so cool. Oh, thanks. Yeah, not, not traditional games like shooters or RPGs or free-to-play stuff. My team makes empathy games. It's art, really. You know, games which say something about the human condition. Cutting-edge stuff. If you say so. I played this game where you had to run really fast over a road. Only I didn't, and I got hit by a train. I died. There's one we have at work on a screensaver where you navigate through a maze. Did you do that one? Uh, no. That wasn't me. Did you make that one with the train? No. No, I didn't. Sorry. You should have been a taxidermist. So where do you work? Super fan. It's not far from your office, actually. So what does a computer game person do? Play games all day? Sounds pretty easy to me. There's a little bit more to it than that. Dad, can you put me in one of Jack's video games? Could I put Molly in your game, Jack? Is that even possible? Let's just try to get through the first day to begin with, yeah? 
I'll walk you through it. Don't forget, I need to be taken to school at some point. Yeah, yeah. Now, first you need to find my desk. You can't miss it. It's the one with the robot doing the sick dab. Sneak past Sonia, the receptionist. Avoid any awkward questions. She's a bit dippy, so you shouldn't have any problems there. Alright, I don't need to be horrible. She sounded nice enough on the phone. You're mean, Jack. How old are you, anyway? Eight and a half. Good age. Why? Don't know. Hello, stranger. You look well rested. Uh, thanks. You do too. Thanks. Get in there, Jack, my son. Good morning! Derek's in a good mood. hell was that? What? Jack, you sure you're not still feeling ill? Right, <laughs> yeah. I'm completely not with it this morning. I should probably get going. Hey, you never told me how your holiday was. Brilliant, thank you. Saw lots of old temples and the like. Really enlightening. In Benidorm? Okay, well, I've got to run. Keep on keeping on. Uh, bye. So, what do I do when I get there? It's Monday. That means sprint planning. You're going to coordinate with your team on their tasks for the week. That's no good to stuff like that. Thanks for the encouragement. It's simple, trust me. Joan is working on modelling the last of the cream cakes for Mrs Clapton's tea shop. Letitia's putting the finishing touches to the AI for the retirement home scene with the shell shock veteran. And Tobias is writing up the design for the interactive funeral procession. And Maya is midway through implementing rubble support. You may as well be speaking German. Your game sounds bad, Jack. It's about embodying the experience of someone who's witnessed death and is coming to terms with their own mortality. It's poetic. It'll make you cry. Jonah Cakes, Letitia's Shell Shock, Tobias Funerals, Maya Rumble. See? You're a natural. Uh, hello. Um, good weekends, everyone? Get up to anything interesting? No. Okay, um, let's see. So, I'm supposed to go around everyone and check what you're all working on. So, um, Jonah... Are you rumbling? Uh, no, sorry, maybe that's not right. Okay, Letitia. Are you rumbling? By the way, feel free to step in if I get anything wrong. No? All right, then. Okay, Tobias. I believe you're looking at a funeral procession. Good luck with that. I'm going to assume that's correct. And finally... Maya. Are you doing the IA? The, the AI? One of them. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not sure that's quite right. Look. Even I can tell this meeting is a bit pointless. You all know what you're up to even if I don't. I guess what you're really looking for is a pep talk, isn't it? Some words of encouragement. I'm sorry. I thought I could do this, but none of this comes naturally to me. You all look like nice, bright people. 
You don't need to listen to an old fart like me. I'm sorry that I can't give you anything more inspiring. Maybe I'll just leave you with the advice that my dad gave to me on my 18th birthday. Keep your head down. Don't take unnecessary risks. Stay out of debt. Cheers. Come on, baby. Tell me now. Give me that Derek Lovin'. Yes, yes, yes! Hey, yo. This is ridiculous. What the hell? Headshot! Come on, Jack. Let's have our catch up. Okay. Jack, I'm loving that TV series you recommended. Did you catch the latest episode? What did you think of the chapel scene? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, I'm glad you're enjoying it. That the Lord forgives, I do not bit, and then he pulled out the machine gun and was all... <laughs> blew that bugger's chin clean off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was my favourite bit, too. Jack, I'll cut right to it. Your team is doing fantastic work. Really outstanding. But the publishers over the next month. Surprise visit. You know how these things go. Sounds exciting. It'll be a shit show. I need you and your guys to crunch for the next few weeks. Obviously, we'll take care of pizzas, take away, whatever you guys need. You mean work overtime? It'll be good fun, won't it? The team hard at it, down in the trenches together. We'll keep any seven-day stints to a minimum, but if you could have your boys free up the next few weekends, that'd be great. Hang on. There's no way I'm working weekends for a silly computer game. Jack, the company expects it of you. And you don't want to let the others down. I, I, I mean, I'd, I'd love the overtime pay, don't get me wrong, but... I can't give up that time right now. Overtime pay? You're getting a little off message, Jack. As a line manager, I need you to set an example. Ha! We make games! We're not saving lives here! What do I get out of this? Don't raise your voice to me. I expect the team to pull together, to show some passion. Passion? I'll show you what you can do with your passion. Hey, Dad. Oh, hey, John. Jack's got something to tell you. Yeah, now, now before I go into details, it's important you know that a lot of your colleagues were really impressed with how I handled things today. Jack got fired. Tell me she's joking. No, 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 I didn't get fired. Uh, Molly, don't tell your dad that. OK, well, well, maybe I had to get a little bit fired. Told you. Between you and me, I think that Clive fellow overstepped his authority. I mean, I was just trying to give him some friendly advice. This is a disaster. It's all good. We've still got my job, and no offence, but it pays better too. I'll sort your pay slip. 
Okay. Here's the thing. Uh oh. Everything okay? Something go wrong? Fancy a beer? Shot of tequila, maybe? Wait. What? You got fired as well? Pretty eventful day, right? Oh, this is not happening. What a nightmare. Oh, but it was all gravy when you lost my job. Do you two need some privacy? Very cute. Okay, that's it. I'm going to demolish a cheesecake. Who wants some? I want two slices. Hey, it's my figure you're ruining there. But yeah, I'll have a quarter. <laughs> a quarter? You'll get what's left, mate. 